I was just a little late tonight. We got tangled up in the cars and couldn't get in. <laughs> I'm usually late, old. Not long ago, I was speaking at a United Brethren church, and the minister got up and said, I want to introduce you to the late <laughs> Mr. Rack. <laughs> well, I was born a little late. I was late for my wedding, about two hours. <laughs> If I can just be late for my funeral now, it'll be all right. <laughs> it's one I really want to be late at. <laughs> we are happy to be here in this lovely city as we're driving around tonight, coming down here. I was thinking of back several years ago when we had the, the meeting here, and I was thinking what a wonderful time the people here showed us how. They were so nice, and the Lord blessed us, and Brother Bosworth was with us. He's gone across the sea now, on the other side. I went to see him just before leaving. He was all the way up to a hundred years old. He'd just come back from Africa, where we'd been missionarying together. I said to him, when he was rushed into his home, and there laid the little patriarch laying there dying. Horseman there, um, talk if there ever was anyone that added the dignity to that was F.F. Bosworth. Yeah, he was a great man of God, one of the early ones. Come here in Texas and stayed in one city for ten years and sat in seven churches. And uh, with one revival, never stopped, night or uh, all days, and uh, for ten straight years, every night somewhere holding a meeting for, uh, here in Texas. Did you hear how he went? About an hour before he left the cross, to cross the way, he'd been asleep for a while, and he raised up, looked in the room, and said, Mother. And for one solid hour, or maybe two hours, he shook hands with friends that he had led to Christ and been gone for 50 years, crossed over the bar on the other side, went back, laid down his hands, crossed him like that, went to meet God. I'll never forget his last words to me. He said, hurry, Brother Bram, get overseas right quick. There's where the fields are open. And he said, I said, Brother Bosworth, you're not sick? He said, not one big sick. He said, it's just coming my time now. I've lived my life. I said, of all your long life for Christ, what was your greatest time, Brother Bosworth? He said, right now. And I said, do you realize then that you're going? He said, yes, but Brother Branham, all I've lived for for the past 60 years has been for Christ, and most any minute he'll come in that door to take me home. That's all. <laughs> lives of great men all remind us, and we can make our lives sublime with partings leave behind us, footprints on the sands of time. I think of his testimony, I think of Paul Rader when he went. How many ever knew Paul Rader? Many of you people. He's a great man of God, went in California. I used to sit at his feet when I was a little boy, and he and Luke kind of stuck together like my son and I, Billy. And when he was dying, the Moody Bible Institute of Chicago had sent a quartet down to sing, and they were singing kind of a slow songs, Near My God to Thee. And Paul, if you knew him, he always had a sense of humor. He wrote this song, my theme song, Only Believe. And he, uh, he had a sense of humor. He's always cracking something like Brother Bosworth. So when they were singing, Near my God to thee, he raised up the bed and said, Say, who's dying here, me or you? He said, he, he said, Go, said, Raise up those shades and sing me some real good snappy gospel songs. And they went to singing, Down at the cross where my Savior died. He said, That sounds better. He said, Where's Luke? And Luke didn't want to see his brother die, so he was in the other room. And he said, He's uh, in the other room. He said, Tell him to come here. Luke Great big fellow, if you all knew him. He and Paul and Billy Sunday and F.F. F. Bosworth and all them were in their days. Carried the gospel in their days. So then when the, they, uh, Luke said to Paul, or Paul said to Luke, he took hold of his hand and said, Think of it, Paul, or Luke. We've come a long ways together, haven't we? He said, Yes, we have, Luke, or Paul. Luke, Paul said to Luke, We've come a long ways. He said, Yes, we have, brother. But said, think of it, in five minutes from now, 
I'll be standing in the presence of Jesus Christ, clothed in his righteousness, squeeze his brother's hands and die. I think as Balaam said of old, let me die like them. <laughs> oh, we're all happy to be Christians, aren't we? I wonder what we could look to tonight if it wasn't for Christ. What hope would we have? Where could we settle? Where could we base anything for a foundation today outside of Christ? Oh, sinner friend, you in this little auditorium tonight, let me, let me warn you, flee from the wrath that is to come. There's only one hiding place. I'm glad that God made a city of refuge, Christ Jesus. We can run in our state. Recently I was in India, Bombay, where we, the Lord let us preach to the greatest crowd. Blanket natives, breaking their idols on the ground, receiving Christ as Savior. I guess in India it was three times that, but we couldn't count them. Now, India is rather a bilingual country. You know, it was owned by England and just recently taken its freedom from bankruptcy, of course, and then uh, well, they were bankrupt and they were given their freedom, rather. And then I picked up a newspaper and was reading in the English column and said, I suppose the earthquake is over now. The birds are all coming back. Now, I'd like to take just a moment to tell you the story. In India, they're very poor. I believe the most poverty-stricken place I was ever in my life was in India. You people just don't realize that you happen to go there once. See little mothers laying on the street, their little babies with no flesh on their face, little bellies swelled up. They're dying from hunger, begging for something to eat. Ask you to take the baby. You let her die, but try to save her baby. You take this one. What about that one, this one, that one, that just everywhere? It's certainly a pathetic thing. And I have my heart broke to see India. I hope to go back again this fall. In the newspaper it said that all the birds that flew away from their coves. In India they don't have nice fences like you have here in the States, woven wire and so forth, and fine picket fences. They pick up the stones mostly and lay the stones together. There's 470 million people in India. And I, I know I'm exaggerating, but I guess 400 million beggars, they're just, they know nothing but beg. They got plenty of natural resource, but not the mentality to develop it. All they know is begging religion. And I was entertained that afternoon in the temple of the Jains of 17 different religions, and every one of them denied Jesus Christ or him or a God. So you can imagine what they are to believe. Most of them in reincarnation, they were Wipe the streets where they go so they won't step on as much as a little flea or an ant that it might be their mother returned back in that farm or something. I'd preach a blood sacrifice to a people like that. But that night, when the Holy Ghost came on the scene, a total blind man stood there. I seen a vision he's going to receive his sight. I said, I challenge every one of you, Mohammed, and all the rest, the Jains, the Sikhs, and the Buddhas and what more, to come here and give this man his sight. I said, what's the audience to silent about? I said, you can't do it, neither can I. But the God of heaven, raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, has promised these things that we see. And I just saw a vision. I wouldn't have said that if I hadn't saw the vision. A man's going to receive his sight. I said, now, if the Mohammedan prophets are so great, let them come forth and give him sight, and I'll be a Mohammedan. I said, you thought it was the telepathy. I was reading his mind when I told him that he had to have holy men. Oh, you just have to go there nearly to understand it. I said, they, this man is blind. He went blind watching the sun. He's a worshiper of the sun. He worshiped the creation instead of the creator. We know that. And I said, what would you do if the Sikhs wanted to convert him to their state? Or the Jains wanted him to his? What more? What would they do? Just change his way of thinking. We have the same thing in the United States, only one God. I said, all the Methodists want to make all the Baptists Methodists. The Baptists want to make all the Presbyterians Baptists. The Pentecostals want to take the whole thing. So there you are. What is it? Change your way of thinking. But there's got to be something that's right and something wrong. I held the Koran in one hand, the Bible in the other, and I said, one of them's right and one's wrong. They both can't be right because they're two different, one from the other. 
And I said, but if Jesus Christ, who has showed me a vision that he's going to receive his sight, if he receives his sight, how many of you people now seeing that your priest or no one else here can give him his sight? And a man says he'll serve the God that gives him his sight. Now, if Jesus Christ will restore his sight, how many of you will seek Jesus Christ for your Savior? Just as far as you can see that black hands in the air, there's estimated 500,000 people. So, and when that man received his sight, he grabbed me around the waist. Now, the mayor of Bombay, I did have his name packed a long time in my pocket. He was sitting right there. And while they had a militia, they tore my shoes off, my pockets out of my coats. They have 20 or 30 people and, and guards trying to hold them back. And them little women to run over the top of them guards just to merely get close to where you that touch you, let the baby get near you or something. Thinking them hungering and thirsting for God like that, and we almost have to hire people in the United States to come hear the gospel or go to church on Wednesday night. That's it's the pitiful. To finish my story, the little birds go in these net, make their nests in these rocks, and also the uh, cattle and sheep come in out of the fields and stand in the afternoon around the shade of these walls to keep out the hot direct rays of that tropical sun. And all of a sudden, them birds flew away from their home and went out in the fields, in the trees and bushes. The cattle moved out from around the fences. The sheep went out in the field and stood leaning against one another. Something was fixing to happen. All of a sudden, there came an earthquake. Shook all the walls down. If the little birds had stayed in their nest, they'd have been killed. If the cattle and sheep would have stayed around those walls, they'd have been killed. They stayed out there for two days. Because there was constantly earthquakes coming, small and large. Then after a while, the cattle and sheep returned back again. The birds flew back to what homes they had left in the nest, in the rocks and so forth. And the paper says that's a sign that the earthquakes are over. Now look, God that led the birds and the sheep and the cattle into the ark is the same God that can lead them today. Amen. He did it. And if a bird, an animal, by instinct, knows how to get away from the big towers of Babel that's fixing to fall, how much more are born-again men and women to know how to flee out, lean against one another? If there ever was a time we ought to lean on one another, is right now. Come together, all of us together, and stay together, for the great towers of this great world-made system is going to pass away that are issuing in of a kingdom that has no end. The millennium will begin one of these days. Upon this, let's approach the word now, and before that, let us bow our heads for prayer. I wonder just before we pray, if there would be present any man or woman outside of Christ would like to be remembered in this prayer. Would you raise your hand? Just say, remember me, Brother Branham. God bless you. Your sincerity is wonderful. May God hear. God bless you. A dozen or more hands. God bless you, lady. That's way back in the back. God sees your hand. Certainly he does. God bless you, sir. Our Heavenly Father, we come approaching thy throne of justice. And if we would get justice, we'd be just simply wiped from the face of the earth. But we're coming under the blood of Jesus. For he said in his own words, if you ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. And we're coming in the name of the Lord Jesus not asking for justice, Lord, but we're asking for mercy. Just this story, Father, and that newspaper clipping that we have there, that those little birds flew away, got away. All the same God that could bring them into the ark and before the end of in destruction is the same God today. Can pull his birds and his animals away from danger. Surely, Lord, you can warn us to flee from the wrath that is to come. For the nations have sinned and turned against God. They've rebelled in their hearts. And soon we realize that there will be an atomic explosion universally that will shake this world into a tomorrow, our eternity. Then some beautiful morning, the Lord Jesus and his church will return to the earth all for that day, God. That's what our hearts are longing for. When the old will be young there forever, there will be no more old people and no more infant of days. They'll just be a, in that great splendor of youth forever. We thank thee for this great truth, Lord, though it seems far away for us now, but yet it may not be until tomorrow till we see it. 
I pray, Father, for these who raised up their hands reverently and gallantly tonight that they wanted to receive you as their Savior, want to be remembered in prayer. God, there is not a person in the world that's sufficient to lead such people. I realize that it's your Spirit doing that. You said, No man can come to me except the Father has drawn him, and all that the Father has given me will come. Father, I pray that you'll save them tonight. May something be said or done in such a way that they'll receive you as their Savior and be filled with your Holy Spirit. For we realize that those that are sealed, the plague has been commissioned not to come near any of those who has the seal of God in their forehead. Grant it, Lord. Save the savable tonight. Fill with the Holy Spirit those who are waiting for it. And heal all the sick and the afflicted. Bless the saints, Lord. Give them a new courage. May they buckle up the armor a little stronger. Bless every church, every denomination. God, we pray that your arms of mercy will reach out into them and a revival will break in every church through this community here and there will be a coming together like the, a Russian wind. Granted, Father, send a revival to these wonderful people here who love you. I pray that you forgive us of our shortcomings and sins. Now, Father, hide the speaker tonight in the blood of the Lord Jesus, for we ask it in his name. Amen. In the Gospel writings tonight, in the book of St. Matthew, the 12th chapter and the 42nd verse, we wish to take a text there for a little context, the Lord willing. Just this morning, I had to kind of what I call speak for Brother Moore. Brother Moore had to go back home for he's bringing his wife and them down in the morning. And we're waiting for him to come. Brother Moore is a great soul for God. Amen. A great man of God. I've known him since I was just a, a... Well, started in the ministry 14 years ago in evangelistic service. He's been many places over the world. I found him. He isn't here tonight, so I can say this. A real, true, blue Christian. A real Amen. man of God. Brother Moore got a wonderful church up there at Shreveport. The Lord's blessing. Now, and... St. Matthew 12, 42, And the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Amen. Uh, Jesus had been operating the people in because that they had misunderstood his message. And they was trying to uh, make it out something that it wasn't. He had been in their cities and had been performing miracles and showing his Messiah sign to the people as we talked of last night. And we find that those who were ordained to life saw it. Those who were not ordained to life did not see it. The gospel blinds those who are, are not willing to accept it. Amen. And it will give sight to those who are willing to accept it. And that's the way it was in his days when the scripture plainly stated exactly the things that he did. And said he would do it. And how they missed it, it showed that they had to be blinded. And to think of it, that poor Jews were blinded that our eyes might have a chance to be opened. And now the same gospel that blinded the Jews is blinding the church. Amen. Same thing promised exactly, and it goes a million miles over their heads. I'm glad you're recording that. I, I know that thus saith the Lord, that the, the gospel, the same gospel that blinded the Jews is now blinding the Gentiles because it is the same gospel, for there's no other gospel but the gospel of the Lord Jesus. We have many creeds, but there's one gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel came not in word only, but through power and demonstration, manifestations of the Holy Spirit, God making his word come to pass. It had to be that for, in Mark 16, he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. These signs shall follow. Or otherwise, go into all the world and demonstrate the power of the resurrection. 
He's not dead, but he's alive. Right. And he's depending on you and I to let him work through us to will his will. Right. Amen. And if anything we ever approach is not Scripture, you're duty-bound to come tell us about it. Right. It must come from the Bible through the Bible. Right. It must cope with the rest of the Scriptures and be right. If it isn't, then we're ready to say that it's wrong. And if an angel or a, from heaven or anything else would come preach anything else that's not in this Bible, don't you listen to it. Amen. This is God's Word and God's Word only. Amen. And we know that it is true. Now, we find that Jesus had thoroughly and convinced every believer that believed on him as he said, My sheep hear my voice. Stranger they will not follow. And we found last night in giving what God said he would be when he come, what the prophet spoke of, that he would be a God prophet. The Lord your God shall rise up a prophet like unto me. And they know the Messiah would be, the sign of the Messiah would be the prophet. Here some time ago speaking to a rabbi. Or a man, John Ryan, had been blind for 20 years, received his sight, begging on the streets in Fort Wayne. And this rabbi called me in and said, By what authority did you uh, open John's eyes? I said, I never opened his eyes. He said, Well, how did you do it? I said, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And he said, Far be it from God having a son. How could a spirit have a son? I said, Rabbi... I said, I'd like to ask you something. Would you believe the prophets? It would be hard for you to believe the prophets. He said, sure, I believe the prophets. I said, who did Isaiah speak of in 9 and 6 when he said, to us, a child is born, a son is given? Well, he said, that was the Messiah. I said, what relationship is Messiah to God? He said, he is God, the anointed one. I said, tell me one place that Jesus ever failed to... But what he showed that he was the anointed Messiah, the Lord your God. And he said, well, he was a thief. I said, how was he a thief? He said, he stole corn right out of the cornfield. I said, Rabbi, your own law said that a man can pass through a cornfield and eat what he wants to, but he can't take out any in a bag. He didn't even know that being a rabbi. <laughs> he can't take any out for the body. I said, he didn't steal. You know that rabbi stood there for a few minutes? And I, I said, Rabbi, don't you believe that he was that? He said, look, sir, said, if I preached that, I'd be down there in the street begging. I said, I'd rather be down there begging and drinking branch water and eating chicken three times a day in my name and gold on this temple here and know I was an error. Right. I'd rather be truthful. And he started to cry and he turned around and said, I'll see you later. I said, you're not honest with me, Rabbi. He said, I believe if them temple priests would have listened to him, we had been better off today. And I said, then you believe what about it? He said, I believe he was a good man. I said, Rabbi, do you believe he was a good man? He said, I'll go farther than that with you. I believe he was a prophet. I said, that's all I want you to say. <laughs> then he said he was the son of God. And then if he was a prophet, he can't lie. So therefore, you believe he was a prophet, the Son of God. He showed the sign of Messiah, and he wouldn't talk to me no more and run into place. Oh, brother, what that love of money will do. What a love of some uh, ecclesiastical farm will do. But what the love of God will do to a heart that's willing to surrender to the will and ways of God. Jesus had proved to them that if I do not the works of my Father, then don't believe me. But if I do the works, said you listen to the works then. If you can't believe me, they said him being a man, make yourself God. Said if I do the works of God, then what you got to say about him? In other words, now we find that he did those things, those signs and wonders before them, and many of them, the Gentiles did not see them because they know nothing about a coming Messiah. But the Jews and the Samaritans seen that Messiah sign, and as soon as they saw it, they said, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. The woman at the well said, We know that Messiah cometh and will do these things, but you must be his prophet. Jesus said, I am he. Oh, there never was a man could say that but him. Never can be no more, because he was the only one. 
That's right. Now, and they failed to see it, and when they did see it, they made fun of it and said that he was doing that through an evil spirit, that it was Beelzebub. In other words, Beelzebub is a devil. In other words, the power of the devil, he was a fortune teller. And they claimed to be a fortune teller because he could perceive the thoughts in their minds and tell them, why reason ye in your heart? I saw you when you were under the tree. Your name is Simon. Your father's name is Jonas. Why? They, they said he's a fortune teller. And Jesus said, I'll forgive you for saying that, but someday the Holy Ghost is coming. And to speak against that will not be forgiven. In this world, neither in the world that is to come. So the seriousness that we face in this day at the end time, speaking of the end time, the sign that was given to Lot in his days would appear again in the last days. And Jesus standing there at that time, performing it. And they said, uh, speaking about the days gone by, and he upbraided the cities and told them of their unbelief and the hardness of their hearts. And then finally, he began to speak to them about God. And God in all ages and all times has always had signs and wonders among his people. Amen. Not any time or any age. I want any historian to go with me back even to the Nicene Council or even the pre-Nicene Council in the history and find out if any in the, any time down to Luther, Martin, John Smith, Moody, Sankey, Calvin, Knox, Spurgeon, any time that they ever had a real pouring out of revival, they had the power of God manifested among Amen. them by signs, Amen. wonders, speaking in tongues, Amen. demonstrations, divine healing, and so forth. Not one time. And every time they started a revival, someone raised up and started an organization behind it, and it died and never did come back again. Amen. Amen. Search the Scriptures. Search the history and find out if every time they ever organized the Christian religion, it died right there and never rose again. Can't. God's either going to lead the church or the Holy Ghost is going to lead it or man's going to lead it. If you choose man, go ahead. God pulls his church right out. Pillar of fire moves on and the church moves with it. He has individuals in every church, all different kinds of churches. If a man is a Catholic, and he's depending on the Catholic Church for salvation, that man's lost. Right. But if he's a Catholic and depending on Jesus Christ for salvation, by faith are you saved and that by the grace of God. Right. Whether he's Baptist, Pentecostal, whatever he is, it's our faith, our personal faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our right. Savior. Never draw no boundary lines for organizations. We believe all people are, have the right to be a Christian. Whosoever will, let him come. No matter what color, creed, what he is, if he's a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ and accepted him as personal Savior, he's saved by faith. That's the grace of God that call him. Now, we find out that all through the ages, God's always had signs and wonders with his people. Through all ages, every age. And we go back, Jesus was referring back to them when he seen that they wouldn't believe him as the Messiah. And he began to refer back to ages beyond. He said, Verily I say to you that Jonah, in the days of Jonah, they'd asked him for a sign. They said, Show us a sign. You see, no matter how many things taken place, they didn't see it. And it's the same thing today. Why wow, people sit right one by the side of the other like that, and one can see the power and glory of God, and the other sees nothing. Amen. Well, like Paul, the pillar of fire, it was, he could see it all right, but them standing by him couldn't see it. The wise man saw the star, nobody else saw it, come out over the observatories and everything else, because he wasn't looking for it. Amen. You've got to be looking for something. You've got to come with expectations. Led of the Holy Spirit, then God will reveal Himself to you. Amen. Now, we find out that they said we'd seek a sign from Him. And He said, A wicked or an adulterous generation seeks after sign. And there'll be no sign given it but the sign of Jonah. Say, I might stop here just a moment. 
Before we get down, well, try not to keep you too long. I overdone it last night. As a remarkable thing, I preached a sermon this morning in 20 minutes. Minister, that's just really good. It usually takes me about three hours to get through one. But some people can preach and say more than maybe in 15 minutes than I could in three hours. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a southerner, and I'm slow, and I just can't think of it too fast. I have to wait on him to tell me, and then I say it. So I never went to any schools or seminaries, so I just have to wait on him to say it when he says it. Just come after him. But I'm pretty sure I'm right if I wait on him. <laughs> you just suffer a little while with me. So then we find out that the days of Jonah. Now, a lot of people make fun of Jonah, of saying he was a Jonah. Well, Jonah was no bad fella. Jonah was a prophet. And he couldn't have got out of the will of God like that. It's all by the will of God. He never took the wrong ship. He took the right ship. Did you ever read the history of Jonah? It's wonderful. You know, I always felt sorry for him down the belly of that whale. He had his hands tied and his feet tied and in a stormy sea and thrown out and the whale swallowed him. And when the whale... A uh, fish feeds, then when it gets through feeding, it goes down to the bottom and rests itself on the bottom. Feed your little goldfish and watch them. They'll go down, put their little swimmers on the bottom as you get the belly full and, and, and rest a while. Well, this whale had filled up on this prophet and went down to the bottom of the sea, and he was laying there with his hands tied, his feet tied, and then the vomit of the whale in his belly, probably 20 fathoms deep, and the bottom of the sea in a stormy sea on top. And laying there, everywhere he looked, it was a whale's belly. He looked forward, his whale's belly, backward, his whale's belly, everywhere around. Talk about symptoms. He had them. A bad case. But you know what I like about Jonah? He refused to see any of it. He said, Once again will I look towards thy holy temple. These things are lying vanities. I look towards thy holy temple because when Solomon dedicated the temple, he prayed and said, If thy people be in trouble any time, and look towards this holy place then here from heaven. And you know, down in that whale's belly, Jonah still remembered that that prayer was sufficient. And he said, Once more will I look towards thy holy temple. And God made that whale take him just exactly where God wanted him to go. And of Jonah, under those circumstances, there's nobody here that bad off, surely not, under those circumstances, could look towards a temple that was built by the hands of man and the prayer of a man that was a mortal, later backslid, and could believe that God heard his prayer and God answered it in such a way to deliver him under such circumstances, how much more ought we tonight to look away from our symptoms to the... Throne of God, where Jesus sits with his own ready comes. And the front of the great majesty on high to make intercessions. Refuse to look at your sickness. Refuse Amen. to see anything. Amen. Be like Abraham of old. When he was 75 years old, Sarah was 65, and God told him he was going to have a baby. But Sarah, he believed it. 25 years never changed him a bit. He staggered not the promise of God by unbelief. I can hear him say after the first 30 days, he'd lived with her since she was a child or a young woman, his half-sister, and he, she was sterile, so was he. And he said, and she's past the age of barren, past the age of menopause. She's 65 years old, he's 75. And I imagine after about so many days, he said, how you feeling, honey? No different. Praise God, we're going to have it in him. <laughs> Go on downtown, buy your bunch of little pink booties and some bird eyes and pins. Get ready. We're going to have it anyhow. Well, they thought he was crazy. And they'll think you're crazy as long as you take God at his word and deny anything. He knows God was able to keep that which he had performed. And we're supposed to be children of Abraham. We're children of Abraham if we have the faith of Abraham. Everything else but God's word is a lie. Look what God said. We look at the unseen. You look what your mortal eyes don't see. You don't see with your eyes anyhow. You only look with your eyes. You see with your heart. You look right at it and say, I don't see it. You mean you don't understand it. <laughs> your seeing is your understanding. So you understand with your heart. 
Now, Jonah, in all that condition, God honored his prayer. There's one thing about it. A true child of God, you can't hide him from prayer. Amen. They tried to scald it out of John and they put him on the Isle of Patmos. They said, boil him in Greece for 24 hours. You couldn't boil it out of him. Tried to steer it out with some lines out of Daniel. You just couldn't do it. Tried to burn it out with fire with the Hebrew children. Just couldn't do it. Well, you can't burn the Holy Ghost out. It's fire itself. Fire by fire. And when a man is really filled with God's Spirit, the Holy Ghost, you can't burn it out, steer it out, run it out. It's there to stay. Now, notice how we always thought Jonah got out of the will of God. He did not. Nineveh was a big city full of sin, backslidden. Just about like almost the size of St. Louis, a great city. Many thousands of people there. They went off and sinned, been to worship idols. And now, their main idol, their main god of the sea, their occupation was fishing. And the main god of the sea was the whale. And when this whale come running in amongst the fishermen, licked out his tongue for a gangplank, the prophet walked out of the whale's mouth. Sure they're going to believe it. God delivered his prophet right out to him. God knows how to do things. Might sound silly, but that's what it is. Now notice, a long ways around getting to the point. But notice, Jesus said, catch this now, here it comes. Let your heart open. Jesus said, a wicked and an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Now he couldn't have been talking to them because he wasn't dead yet. But said there will be given them a sign. The sign of Jonas was in the belly of the whale for three days and nights. So must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and nights. Otherwise, what kind of a sign would a wicked and adulterous generation find or have, give to him? Now you can talk about all the signs you want to. Here's the sign that he said that a wicked and an adulterous generation, and this is it. Sodomites are spreading the earth. Doubt, unbelief, isms, all kinds of things spreading the earth. It's a wicked and an adulterous generation. But he said they will receive the sign of the resurrection. Hallelujah! What? Jesus Christ alive among us! Walking in our midst, he's not dead. The works that I do shall you also. A little while the world sees me no more yet, you shall see me for I will be with you. I the personal pronoun. I'll be with you, not somebody else, but I will. Amen. I'll be with you, the believers. Amen. The world won't see me, but ye shall see me, for I'll be with you. How? In you. Amen. How far? Amen. For the apostle generation, until the end of the world. Amen. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever. The end of the consummation. The great prophet Elisha to appear on the scene. A woman hater, wilderness man. With a message that turned the hearts of the children back to the fathers. Remember, he had a compound coming. Remember, in Malachi 4, Malachi 3 spoke of John the Baptist coming as Jesus referred to. Why the prophets say, my messenger. But remember, the Malachi, if you come in Malachi 4, watch the last verse of it. We know that wasn't John because he said he had burned the earth with a heat and the righteous would walk out on all the ashes of the wicked. So it never happened when John came. But that Elijah's prophesied again today. Notice the first Elijah was to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. The old Orthodox to the new message was going on and he was given. And that and is a conjunction to tie the verse together. The hearts of the children back to the fathers. And then the message of John in the last days or the message of Elijah. The spirit will be in the church. Will be take the hearts of the people that fallen away from the Pentecostal fathers and turn their hearts back. To the original message of Pentecost again. As the, the messenger of the covenant, the seventh star of the day, we're living in that day. Notice this generation, wicked and adulterous generation, will seek after a sign and they will get it. What kind of a sign? The sign of the resurrection. He is not dead, but he's alive. Our religion is not a history. It's a living fact. It's a living God. It's a living experience. As it was in the days of Jonas. Now he went along to give another expression. He said, and as it was in the days of Solomon. Back in the days of Solomon. When God sends a gift to the earth, 
If the people receive it, it becomes a golden age to them. If they reject it, it becomes a chaos to them. Look what happened when Jesus was God's message to the people and they rejected it. Look what happened to the people that rejected it. In the days of Solomon, Solomon was the Solomon's reign, any minister knows that was a golden age for Israel. The greatest age, they built the temple, they had no wars to mount anything, and they had a power of God among them. Oh, that gift was so great, so all the nations around about fear them. Listen, brother, what we need today, we don't need atomic shelters. What we need is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Nations of fear, if this whole United States that claims to be a Christian will fall under the power of God, there will be so many things happen here to every nation will be afraid to turn an atomic bomb. Right. He is our refuge. He is our strength, our shield, our buckler. Our all in all. Now, we notice then that he said as it was in the days of Solomon, the queen of the south comes from the most parts of the earth. To hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now in the days of Solomon, all the people were with one accord. They all come in and rallied around a gift. Solomon had a gift. Did you know that? Solomon had a gift of discernment. And he had a, he could discern things. Showed it come from God. Well, all the nations come around and go in at the temple and hear this great man Solomon watch his wisdom and know he was just a man. They know that had to come from God. And oh, how everybody talked about it. Every Israelite could stick his chest out, say, we don't serve a dead God. We serve one's alive. We can prove it to you. Come down to the meeting tonight and find out whether it's right or not. Hey, Amen. I like that. You know where you're standing, man. Come down and see if it's right or not. Come on into our country over here. See if the living God can come into a man and make him a superman almost. Amen. That's what he does with every born-again Christian. Amen. A superman, a superwoman, super child. Turns his back on sin and the things of the world and walks in peace with God. Super sign. He said he'd give a super sign. Now notice all the people rallied around. It wouldn't it be wonderful tonight if all America, all of we Americans would forget our denominational differences and we'd all rally around the gift that God give us, the Holy Ghost, Every church and every person rally around that wild and it would be the talk of the world everywhere. We all know it. If it's our denomination, it's all right. But if our denomination ain't with us, nope, nothing to do it. Oh, how carnal. No wonder God can't do nothing for us. We're no condition, ain't got nothing to build on. Notice, He'll never build up on our organization. Just get that out of your mind. He'll build up on Christ Jesus with each individual that'll come and receive him out of any organization. A true, honest heart. And one just as good as the other when it comes to that. Because it's all organization, which is all right. That's perfectly all right. But whenever you place, somebody told me not long ago, said, Brother Branham, you know what happened? This great organization is talking about says always sponsored you. So you know what they did? They ousted you. They won't have nothing to do with you no more. Said they drove down their stake and said nobody received Brother Branham anymore. I said, well, I drove mine down too and went way out of pass and tucked them in. <laughs> That's the thought. That's the thought. I take them in. Oh, a lot of God's children's in there. <laughs> That's right. The message is to God's children. <laughs> Not to any certain organization, but to God's children. They put me out. I'll take them in to spread mine a little wider. Just take it in. That's all. So we must love one another, keep the roots of bitterness out of us, then God can go to work into us. But till we get that, then we, we're, we're just fighting the wind. We've got to love one another. Jesus said, by this all men will know you're my disciples. Amen. Right or wrong, love anyhow. Amen. Now, we find out then that, that in the days of Solomon, everybody was with one accord. And everyone coming through that didn't have televisions then, Thank the Lord. But they had a, but they had a, the only way they could take a word was from lip to ear. And everybody passing through would go in and see these great meetings and go down and tell their country. And you know, Jesus said, the queen of the south, which was a Sheba, come from the utmost parts of the earth, as the utmost parts of the known earth at that time. Now, if you'll notice, it's a long distance down there across the Sahara. Now, 
People coming and going, the caravans of the camel caravans and the way they had of transportation. People would come in and after a while, the caravans going through her country, this little queen down there, she was probably a pagan, heathen. And everybody come through from up around in Palestine, they was always saying, Oh, you should see what's going on in Palestine. My, their God is a living God. Why, he's anointed one up there and they've even made him king. And wisdom of discernment, you've never seen such. Uh, it couldn't be a human being doing that. We looked at the man, we shook hands with him. He's a man, he wore clothes. He's just a man. But God has chosen him and he does things that's superhuman. So we know it has to come from God. And he gives all the glory to Jehovah, their God. You should come see it. Oh, you know, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing about God. Well, the little queen's heart began to throb. You know, I like to see that. I, 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 you know, you hear a testimony. Now, while she turned her little painted face up and said, hmm, is anything going on like that? Go down here to my church. We'll be up there. Yeah. All right. The story had never been written. Jesus would have never referred to her. She'd have been a modern Jezebel. And so then we find out that till the little lady began to hunger and thirst, faith had caught a hold, and she began to thirst after God, and Jesus said, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst. Just to even thirst, you're blessed, just to thirst. Whether you get anything or not, just to thirst. <laughs> you say, Well, I haven't ever got nothing. Blessed are you anyhow. You're thirsted for it anyhow. <laughs> Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst for righteousness. But he never left you standing like that. He said, for they shall be fed. <laughs> that just does me so good. Lord. They shall be fed. When the deep goes to call into the deep, there's got to be a deep to respond to that call. Amen. Before that can be a creation, there has to be a creator to create that creation. That's Amen. all there is to it. Hunger and thirsting for God. Then we find the little queen all disturbed. Now what usually happens? Now she had God. She had a church and a pastor. And probably was a pagan priest somewhere. But now the real thing to do was go. She took a notion that she wanted to go see if it was true. I like that. I admire that in the queen. Bless her little heart. I'll see her in the resurrection. And she, she wanted to find out whether it was true or not. Now, she had more audacity than many people around here in other parts of the country do. They hear about something like that. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> but she wanted to find out. So she said, I believe I'll go up. Now, in order to go up, she says, the next thing I've got to do, I've got to get permission from my church. Like, usually a good church member does. So they went down to her pagan priest, and she said, Sir, Holy Father, or what he called him, and I'll tell you that I hear news that there's a revival going on up in Palestine. Oh, I've heard that nonsense ever since I was a kid. <laughs> you know, the devil takes his man, but never the spirit. It's, it still is on. God takes his, but never the spirit. Too. Thank God for that. The spirit's battle right on to tabernacles of flesh to the end time. Oh, I've heard that, that stuff. You don't believe that. Now, let me tell you something, my daughter. You must remember you have great prestige. You're the, you're the charter member of our church here. Your mammy belongs to this church. Your grandmammy belongs to it. We all come here. Why, your great-great-grandmammy come here. And you wouldn't be caught with a bunch of holy, uh, you know, uh, people like that. You wouldn't go up there and such as that. It would be a disgrace for you to be caught in a crowd like that. But you know, when God goes to dealing with the human heart, no matter how big they are, he lets them see how little they can get. You see? She said, but sir, you know, I... There's something in me that I, I want to go see it. Well, I shall not give you permission. I'm going to make it strong. I know you're the queen, but I'm the priest. And you'll bring disgrace upon your papa mama and upon this holy temple if you be caught with such a group as that. Well, look what they are. While they're renegades, there's nothing to them. You shouldn't go up and fool around such a group as that. If there was such a thing as the living God, look at the gods we got here. <laughs> That's what's the trouble. They got too many gods. Amen. So they said, she said, but look, let me tell you something. I, my grandmama went here, you said. My grandpapa went here, and my mama went here, and I went here, and I've heard all your creeds all my life. 
They heard all their life, and we haven't seen one mutter or anything out of them. They're dead. But they tell me that there's one living up there. That's the one I want to find out. If your creed is right, she might have said, why don't we see something about your God that you're talking about? You said he was, or did he die? What happened to him? We never have seen him. Grandmama never saw it. Her mama never saw it. Her mama never saw it. When was he God? I like that. Make it real. When was he? Well, she might, he might have said this. Now, my daughter, you're going to go off in the, on the wrong end. You're the deep end. You're going to go in fanaticism. But she said, sir, I want you to know this. I don't care what the price is and what you say, I'm going anyhow. I like that. No wonder Jesus said she'll condemn this generation at the resurrection. I'm going anyhow. We'll excommunicate you. Don't you come back here. No. If it's right, don't worry, I won't be back anyhow. <laughs> I won't go back on that. I'm going to find out where it's right first. I can see her now. She thought over Now She had a lot of things to hinder her. Any person that comes to Christ, don't you worry, the devil's going to give you plenty to hinder you. He don't want you to get there. You're going to go through some obstacles to get there. The first thing you know, I, I can imagine, she went back up to the palace. She sat down and she studied it. I can hear her say, now I've read all the scrolls that I could find on that ancient God of theirs back there, that Israel's God, Jehovah, they talk about. I've got their scrolls here in our library, and the priests use them to criticize him. But if that Jehovah... Is doing that to a man, that means that Jehovah is a living spirit that's in a living person. He's interested in a living being. He ain't some idol or some marble statue. He is a living person. So therefore, we're going, I'm going to go up and see him. Now she says this. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going up first to draw my own opinion about it. I'm not going to take somebody else's word, or they're criticizing one saying this and one saying that. Now let me go and find out for myself. I like that. Amen. Amen. I like that. Let me go and see for myself whether it's right or not. Amen. Let me look it over. I'll, I'll compare it with these scrolls that I read. If the Spirit is on that man, compare it to the scrolls on here, I'm going to say Jehovah's with him, man, and he's a real God. Amen. But if it just Jehovah says one thing and it don't come to pass and these things are not right, then they're no more than our idols here. So I'll go up and find out for myself. Now she said, wait a minute. I've been a great time up here down here. So, I'm not plugging for ministers and so forth, but she said, if it's so, if it's so, I'm going to support it. I'm going to take some gold and frankincense and silver. Amen. If it's right, it's worth supporting. Amen. Amen. If it isn't right, then I'll bring my money back. Amen. She ought to come and preach to the Americans sometimes. Support things that life that you would call you a holy roller, and yet you support it. That's right. But there you are. She said, I'll find out for myself, and if it's right... It's worth everything that I can do to support it. And that's the truth. Amen. It's worth not more, not 10% of your money. It's worth your whole life. Amen. It's worth all the things of the world to you Amen. if it's right. Lord. It's that pearl of great price. If it God still is, if Jesus Christ is the Son of God living today and living tonight, He's the same yesterday and forever, then it's worth every bit of our time, our talent, our everything. Lord. We should sell out to everything. Amen. Say goodbye to everything in service. If it ain't, well, let's just go join something and go ahead and get with a good crowd and live a pretty decent life and go on. But if it's right, let's let's get with it. So that's what she thought. So she loaded up the camels with gold and frankincense. Then the thought comes, you know, Ishmael's children was in the desert in them days, and they were robbers. And they were really a fleet man, too. Real fleet riders, murderers out there in the desert. And she had she had a long ways to go. Now she started off with her little maidens and her eunuchs, a little handful of them, across the Sahara Desert. Now, brother, I have respect for that woman. She didn't, re- you know, there's something about it. If you, if God's really speaking to your heart, you don't notice fear. Amen. If, if God spoke to your heart and told you he's going to heal you tonight, you don't care what the doctor says is wrong Amen. with you. It just, takes, it just takes all the fear out of it somehow. Amen. She didn't care. She was going up to see if it was right or not. So she started across the Sahara Desert. Now look what that little woman, she probably had to travel by night, them direct rays of the Sahara Desert. And remember, she, it take her, you know how long it takes to get across her own camels? Ninety days, three months. She crossed that desert, not in an air-conditioned Cadillac, some air-conditioned coach, 
like some people live here around this United States, they wouldn't go across the street to see it. Amen. But she crossed the desert Amen. 90 days on a camel. And the danger of everything it was, not looking for nothing, but her little heart was beating to find out whether that really was a living God. Or not. She took far. No wonder she arrives in the generation, this generation condemning. She came from the utmost parts of the earth, world on the utmost condition against her. To come and find out whether it was the truth or not. Nowadays, instead of coming and find out, they'll come in church maybe sit down. I'll sit just a minute. Some of the good neighbor asked them to come. I said, if you don't say the things that I like, I'll get right up and go out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you miserable hypocrite. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't mean to hurt you, but I, 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 it's better to scorch you a little and have you burn. So that, that's, that's the truth. I don't mean to hurt you. I don't mean to do that. I love you too much. But I'm just trying to make a point to you. See? Oh, my. It's so miserable to live like that. I hate to live like that. And then there... She come and now across the desert. She had all that difficult. And she had 90 days to travel, maybe travel at night because the hot she couldn't travel in daytime. And all those robbers with all that money and everything. And the only thing she did was one objective that was to find out whether there was a living God or not. Whether that truly was a living God or not. Why ain't the people that honest today? Why don't they find out this Jesus that we all talk about and have creeds about and all kinds of creeds and things? That's, is he living? Where is he? What happened to him? The Bible said he's the same yesterday and forever. Amen. The works that I do shall you also. Where is it at? Amen. When he comes to the city, why, why people laugh at it, make fun of it. <laughs> Newspapers send out a foul report about it. Oh, brother, no wonder there's a bomb hanging in the shelf. Shelter center for us. That's right. But not for the church, remember. It'll be gone. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, she'll be changed and caught up. Across the desert she came. Finally, she arrived at the temple gate. Now, she never come just to sit down a few minutes and say, I'll see now. I'm going in. If he don't talk just like my pastor, I'll just pick up mine and go right back. See? No, she come to stay till she was convinced. She built a camp and stayed right there in the court. I like that. I'll just stay to the end of the revival. I'll search out all the scriptures and see if it's right or not. I'll just not take my first conception of it. I'll just go in and find out. I know what Jehovah is supposed to be. I know what his promises is. I know he's the discerner of the thoughts of the mind. I know all these things. The word of God's quicker, sharper, and powerful and two eight swords, piercing even to the sun of the mire of the bone, and a discerner. The word, the word God. In the beginning was the word, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He was God. And the word, the word. Christ in you, a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Oh, sleeping church, rise, minister, shake yourselves. The hour is here. Flee from these towers of Babel to the cross. There will fall one of these days. Every plant that my heavenly Father has is planted to be rooted up. But upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell can't shake it down. I'm so glad. A spiritual revelation. The whole church is built on revelation. Yes. Upon this rock. The Protestant says, he built it up on Christ. The Catholic says, he built it up on Peter. Both wrong. He built it up on Peter's revelation of who he was. Yes. The great main revelation always is who Jesus Christ is. The book of Revelation, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ, opens with that very thing to show the supreme deity of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am he that was and which is and shall come, the Almighty. Amen. The first of all revelation. Yeah. The revelation upon this rock, I'll build my church. I don't care how many persecutions, how many lines are drawn to cut you out. I'll build my church and the gates of hell will never prevail against it. That right. shows all the gates of hell would be against it, but could not prevail. I'll build my church, the Holy Spirit moving, working the resurrected Christ, moving who can stop it, try it. Right. Never be able to do it. Right. Going right on and on and on. Rise all the critics you want to, you'll only strengthen the church every time you do it. Go to move on. So she got off, took her camels, put her money back in the little kit, I imagine, camped out there. So her first time to attend the meeting. She go in the next morning. I imagine they had all the trumpets sounded, the bells rang, and the hymns were sang. And after a while, Pastor Solomon walked down on the platform. Oh, they had a lot of people there. Maybe a lot of prayer cards to give out that day for all I know. Well, they had some way. 
Anyhow, she got her seat wrapped and sat down in the back of the church. Nobody knew her. The big court that morning, Solomon come out, very fine man, spoke very nicely to the people. After they had prayer and everything, Solomon sat down. And when they did, oh my, they found out that Solomon had some kind of a power within him that couldn't be a man's power. It was God's power. Watch this. The next case, same thing. The next case, same thing. The next case, same thing. Every one of them foul. I bless your little heart begin to beat. She said, now, if that keeps on, I'm going to get me a prayer card, too. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The next day, she tended. She wasn't rushing. No hurry. She wanted to look it over. She went home maybe all night and read the scrolls. That's just exactly what Jehovah is. Amen. That's what he is. All right. Go back. I've never seen that in my church in all my life. This is all strange to me. She goes back and sits Amen. down again. Next morning, she come in. First case, perfectly discerned. Second case, Perfectly discerned. Third case, perfectly discerned. My, her heart got the beating faster. Finally, she got a way to get in the prayer line. After a while, she got up before Solomon. And the Bible said that there was nothing hid from Solomon. Hallelujah. He answered all of her questions. Nothing was hid. If it's hid from anybody else, it wasn't hid from him then. He told her just exactly the thoughts of her heart. Nothing was hid from, but he answered all to her. His spirit of discernment discerned exactly what all her troubles was and everything about it. And what did she say? She turned around and she said, All that I heard is the truth. And more, it's even greater than I heard about. And she said, More than that, blessed is the man that you're with you to watch that work daily. Blessed are they who come and go with you and set in this church that belongs in here with you to see these things happen daily. And more than that, she became a Christian, made a public confession of God. And Jesus Christ, hundreds of years later, said she'll rise in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the utmost parts of the world to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. And I say tonight... Oh, greater than Solomon is here. The Lord Jesus Christ is here. Oh, greater than Solomon. Greater. One of his promises that said, These works that I do shall you do also. It shall be like in the evening time. The path to glory you will surely find. The evening lights are shining. Remember, brother, the sun rises in the east sets in the west. The same sun that rises in the east sets in the west. We know that. Geographically, it crosses the earth. Like that. Now notice what takes place. The prophet said there would be a day that couldn't be called day or night. It would be a dismal, rainy, foggy day. Just enough light that you could see how to join the church and put your name on a book and ask Christ's forgiveness. But in the evening time, it shall be light. Now remember, civilizations travel with the sun. The oldest civilization is the Eastern civilization. China is the oldest civilization we know of. All right. Civilizations travel with it. Now it's gone so far to the east and west coast as met. We're at the west coast. If we're going farther, we'll be back east again. When we leave California, go on into Japan and China. You come back again. What is it? It shall be light in the evening time. We've had a day, 2,000 years, where we've organized, joined churches, built great things, great spires. That's good, but Christ never ordained that. He never did say build a church or have a, a school of theology. He never did ordain these things. He said, preach the gospel. We've done exactly what he said not to do. But anyhow, it's supposed to be that way. But in the evening time, it shall be light. Now, what kind of light would it give? If that was the first sunlight that shine on the eastern people, which is S-O-N of God... And he did the things he did there on that day, on Alpha, he does the same thing at Omega. Amen. As Reuben and Jasper, Benjamin and uh, uh, Jas- or Sarastone, both Benjamin and Reuben, first and last. Now, he's the rainbow in all the church ages. And we're in the evening time. The evening lights have come. And surely, I say with all sincerity, Christians, I say this, sinner, with all sincerity. I'm, I'm not a preacher, suppose. I, I like education. But God gave me another way I could win people to God. The, another way to, to excuse my ignorance, uh, to give me a way to pray for the sick people. 
a spirit of discernment. Now, that's what was in question over at Houston when he had his picture taken by it that night. Dr. Best and Amazon. That, what did that queen see? What made her act like that? She seen something real. She seen something she could put her hands on that was real. Not a statue that sat there that some man had cut out of, 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 uh, of marble or out of wood or made out of clay. She saw something that she could put her hands on. That something that was real. She saw something that lived, that brought life. She knew it had to be God. She seen something. She seen so much put on and so much sham till she wanted to see something real, and God let her see it. Amen. Now, children today, the world's full of sham. Come join our denomination. Recite our creed. Come to our church, the biggest one in the city. It's a sham. I don't say they're not Christians in there. That's not. But as far as the church having anything to do, the organization having anything to do with it, that's wrong. Right. It's just a make-up sham. What the world wants to see today is something real. Amen. Real. Amen. Something that's real, Bible real, Amen. godly real. Amen. All of you know I hunt. I've hunted all my life. My mother's a half Cherokee Indian, and my conversion never took it out of me. If anything I love is them woods. Oh, I just can't hardly stand. I get in those woods and get started. I find God in the woods. God, I hear him calling the coyote and the wolf. I hear him bugling the deer. Why, well, sure. I hear him screaming the eagle, see him in the sunset everywhere around is God. Get out in nature. Get away from the stinking cities and things where you have so much sin and demolish going on all the time. I read in a paper the other day, I forget, 30,000 abortion cases per week done recorded in the city of Chicago. How many is not recorded? 30,000 abortion cases. My, my, what's going to happen, brother? Amen. Think of the world over what's going on at this time. Sin. Oh, it's horrible. Up in the north woods where I used to hunt, I hunted with a fellow up there called Bert Call. Very fine boy. One of the best hunters I ever hunted with. You never had to worry about him. You, didn't have, you couldn't lose him. You know where he was at. And we loved to hunt with each other because we hunted the white-tailed deer. But that was the meanest man I ever seen in my life. He is the cruel hardest person I ever seen. He is another uh, kind of a half breed. So he, he, but a real hunter. And I used to like to hunt with him, but he was so mean, so cruel. He used to shoot little fawns just to make me feel bad. Well, now if the law says you can shoot a fawn, that's all right. Abraham killed a calf and fed it to God, so nothing wrong in killing the fawn if the law said all right. But just to shoot him for the fun of it—that's wrong. That's murder. I don't believe in doing it. I'm a conservationist, the conservation officer for years. I still believe in it. And I belong to many conservation orders. But now, here, I believe in it. I believe, I believe in conserving it. Now, if Bert would just do that because I was a preacher, he'd just make me feel bad. He'd say, oh, you chicken-hearted preachers, like that. He thought he's a big rough guy. So one year I went up there, and he had made him a little bit of whistle, and he could go like a little fawn, that's a baby deer crying for its mammy. And he'd, he'd blow this little whistle. If you ever heard a fawn cry, it's a funny little noise. And I said, Bert, you're not going to use that. He said, oh, go on, Billy, get next to yourself. And well, we went hunting that day, and there's about six inches of snow, good tracking snow, a little late in the season. Well, now, it's hard to find them white-tailed deer. As soon as the first shot fires, brother, you talk about who needed the escape artist. He was the amateur to them. They can get away. And they won't come out. You have to sh- get them out of them brush. Shake them out of there some way, because they'll hide. Lay down, crawl in our brush piles, everything. Get away. A lot of hunters. That's reason you had to be on the moment, shoot quick, fast, everything to get your deer. And Bert and I used to do real well, but he wanted to murder him. He'd get two, three, four, five, anything he could just to make fun, just to laugh at it. And then laugh at me. One day up there, we went back in the woods and got about dinner time. We always carried a jug of, uh, of a hot chocolate. Kind of warms you up where if you get turned around somewhere and have to stay out overnight. We'd always carry a little lunch and we'd hunt up to uh, the presidential range, Mount Washington, Adams, Old Cherry Mountain, and so forth. It's a beautiful country. And we'd went way up into the Calls Gaps and up in that way. And we'd been up way high and we'd hunted up to about 11 o'clock. We'd come to a little clearing about the size of this auditorium. And Bert kind of hunkered down like this. Started back in his bosom. I thought, well, we're going to sit down and eat our dinner. We usually separate him. One go one way and one the other and going back. Coming up the mountain, hunt back down one, take one slope and the other and the other and going back. And so uh, he sat down and I started to sit down too. 
Now, I seen he's reaching in his pocket. And he got that little old whistle. I thought, I said, Bert, you wouldn't do that. He just laughed. Me. He had eyes looking like a lizard to me. Some of them lizard looking eyes sit sideways. He looked up at me, kind of halfway green of that, looked like a sheep killing dog. And he tucked his little old whistle in his mouth and he blowed just like a, a little baby fawn crying. And when he did, to my surprise, right across that opening, a big doe raised up. Now, doe is the mother deer, if you wouldn't know. Oh, she was a beautiful species. Great, big, pretty ears. Those big brown eyes are shining. I looked at her. And he looked up at me, them lizard eyes. I said, Bert, you wouldn't do that. Now, that's, that's strange. They won't raise up that time of day like that. They'll stay. But what was it? She was a mother. A baby was crying. And I watched her again. I could see her, that big head up, looking around, big ears sticking up. And he blowed again, cried like a baby. She stepped right out into the opening. Oh, that was very unusual. They don't do that. And I see her step out there in that opening. I thought, uh-oh. And I see him pull back that lever, throw in that shell on that thirty oh six. Oh, he was a dead shot. And he laid that scope down that crosshair right across her heart. I thought, oh, mercy, how can he do it? How can he do it? That precious mother standing out there looking for her baby. And one second from now, he touched that trigger with that 180 grain mushroom bullet. He'd blow her precious heart plumb through the other side of her. And I thought, Bert, how can you do that? How can you be so cruel? And I see him them lizard eyes getting down. I thought, all right. I couldn't look at it. I just couldn't do it. And she was standing there walking on. What was the matter? She wasn't a hypocrite. She wasn't trying to act something. She was a mother. She was born in her to be a mother. She's looking for her baby. Oh, my. She's watching that baby. After a while, when the barrel raised up above the bush, the deer looked. Now, usually they'll jump, run quickly. Well, that fast are gone. But not her. She's seen the hunter. She spooked at it, as we call it. Look. She's seen the hunter. But she worked her mouth two or three times, raised up her head. Of course, she could smell us standing there. She looked. But well, what was the matter? Her baby somewhere was in trouble. Mother instinct. She knew it was death. She knew she was going to die. But she didn't care. There was something in her motherly love driving her to that baby. Where's it at? Where's my baby? It's in trouble. I, I couldn't look no more. I just couldn't. I felt that loyal heart of that precious mother. Bird, how can you do it? You're cruel. You're, you're evil to do a thing like that. And I see him raised up like that. I turn my back. I prayed in my heart. I said, Heavenly Father, don't let him do that. How can he stand? See that precious mother there trying to find her baby and then deceive her like that and blow her precious, loyal, motherly heart plumb through her. I said, how could he do that, Lord? And I waited. The gun never fired. I waited a little bit longer. It didn't fire. I thought, what's the matter? I looked back and the gun barrel was going like this. <laughs> I looked around. He looked up. The great big tears were running out of his eyes. He threw the gun down on the bank. He said, Billy, I've had enough of it. Lead me to that Jesus you know. Right there on that snowbank, I led that cruel-hearted hunter. What was it? To the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? He saw something real. He seen something that wasn't put on. He seen something that was genuine. Born to experience a mother. Wouldn't you like to be that kind of a Christian? Wouldn't you like for God to make you a Christian as much Christian as that mother, that dear was a mother? Let's bow our heads a moment and ask Him to do it. Our Heavenly Father, a simple little story there of, of the Queen of the South seeing something real by a gift of God. And then churches up in New England there, they, they didn't have none but just church and so forth. That hunter had been, you know him, Lord, now a precious brother, a deacon in the church. But he had never seen anything real. Lord, you said if they hold their piece of stones, they'll cry out. Something's got to cry out. There's a living God. The first time that man saw something that was real, he knew there was a living God then. You used the deer to perform the miracle and bring a cruel-hearted sinner to, to you. Because a mother dear displayed the reality of motherhood. God, make every man and woman in here tonight a Christian like unto that. That can display such a love 
in their hearts that they'll be a, such a Christian, live such an unspotted life from the world, until their neighbors will know that they are real Christians and want to be like them. You said in your gospel, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savior, Lord, that's what happens to our denomination. They lose their savior. They draw boundary lines and let none out or none in. Father, I pray tonight, we know that salt is a savior if it contacts. I pray, God, that this little church and these people will be so salty of the love of God till they'll contact every sinner that they can with such a life. If they can't preach a sermon, let them live one. Display a love for God as that mother dear did for her baby. They're waiting, Father. Receive them into thy kingdom. May they, this night, those who raise their hands, may they become your servants this night. May you show them in the next few minutes that you are alive, not dead. You are alive forevermore. You said, I am he that was dead and is alive again and alive forevermore. And because I live, you live also. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into the judgment, but pass from death unto life. Father, I pray that you'll make believers tonight out of all. If thou are in your unbelieving, may they go believing. And now the service is in your hands, Lord. This is as far as I can go or any other man. But when we leave here tonight, I pray that the people, as they leave this auditorium, will stay like those coming from Emmaus. Did not our hearts burn within us? You walk with them all through the day. Yet they didn't know you. But when you got them inside the room, and then you'd done something just like you did before your crucifixion, then they know that you'd raised from the dead. Now, Lord, come again tonight. We're shut in here in this inn tonight, in this little legion building. Now come and do something tonight. Show your Messiah sign that you are the Messiah sign. And this is a wicked and adulterated generation. And you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. That this is as it was in the days of Lot. When you sat with your back turned to the tent and said, Why did Sarah laugh in the tent and told Abraham his wife's name was Sarah? You promised you would do it, Lord. Ran him. Then when we leave here tonight, we'll go to our different homes saying, Did not our hearts burn within us? as he talked to us along the way. For we ask it in his name and for his glory, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am going to pray for the sick now. I'm going to pray for the sick. I have no education. I, I have no powers. I'm your brother. I hope you understand that. I am sent to you by your Savior and my Savior, your God and my God. Now, one time, David, the shepherd, he was herding his father's sheep. Now, I'm going to try to take the place of David. Listen close. I'm going to try to take the place of David tonight. I'm herding my father's sheep. And one day a bear come in and got a sheep. And David wasn't no spearman or swordsman. The only thing he had was a little sang shot. But he had God's grace in his heart. A lion come in and got one. He went out after him. Got him, slew him, brought the sheep back. I don't have no medicine. I'm not a doctor. I couldn't be a surgeon. I don't know how to handle a knife. I don't know nothing about it. But there's one thing I do have. That's a little slingshot. A prayer. It's simple. But one day, a cancer come in and got one of my father's sheep. I went after him. I brought the sheep back. Prayer of faith saved us. 
I'm coming after you tonight with a slingshot of prayer. I want to bring Father's sheep back. You pray for me now as we call a prayer line. All you Davids in here, help me. Father's sheep is caught out with an enemy. Let's bring it back to health again tonight. Father told us we could do it. If we'd asked anything in his name, he'd do it. Say to this mountain, be moved and don't doubt. You can have what you said. What did we call from that prayer card? Was what we, huh? One. We called from number one last night, didn't we? Uh, what? Oh, you got some more? What was it? Bees. Prayer card bees. How many we have up last night? Eighteen. Eighteen. Don't take many. Then I'm out there without prayer cards. That's perfectly all right. Believe with all your heart. You seen last night. There's more out in the audience than was up here on the platform. Let's call a few out of them cards all right now. Let's start from. Let's say. Um, how many we have last night? Fifty or eighty? Let's start from eighty-five tonight. Prayer card B eighty-five. Who has eighty-five? See, prayer card B eighty-five. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Eighty-five. Come over on this side, sir. Ever who you are. Uh, eighty-six. Would you raise your hand quickly? Eighty-seven over here. Eighty-seven. Who has eighty-seven? This lady here. You have eighty-seven over here, lady. Eighty-eight. Eighty-nine. I didn't see eighty-nine. Would you raise your hand? Look at the people in the wheelchair. See where they're at. 89? Mate, look. Did you look at that card? 89? Who's got prayer card 89? 85, 86, 87, 88, 89? Now, don't get the cards unless you're aiming to come on a platform. See, when I call from somewhere, then nobody answers. Then let somebody else get the cards go to come. 89, 90. Who has prayer card 90? All right. 91? All right, 92, 93, 94, 94, I didn't see it. Look at somebody over here, these, these two women sitting here in a wheelchair, they couldn't get up. If their cards call, we'll pack them over here, see. Nine, 91, 2, 3, 4, 5. 85 to 95, 95 to 100. And prayer card B, would you come? 90, 80, 85 to 100. Those holding those cards, the rest of you just hold your cards. We'll, we'll get to them by and by. 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 100. Now, while they're gathering, them few that we'll start with here, may not get to one or two of them, I don't know, depends on what the Holy Spirit said. How many in the audience here that does not have a prayer card and yet you want, you're sick and want God to heal you. Raise your hand. Right? Now, I do not know you, but if you will just look this away and believe. How many was never in one of my meetings before? Let's see your hand. The Lord bless you. We're glad to have you tonight. Now remember, I do not profess to be a healer. I believe there's only one healer. That's God. Amen. And I believe that he's already did for you everything he can do. It's your time next to accept what he's done for you. Amen. But if he was standing here tonight dressed in this suit, he could do no more for you than what he's doing, what he would do right here tonight. Is that right? Now, in the Bible, how many believe that Jesus is a high priest? How many knows that the Bible said that he's right now the high priest? Setting at the right hand of the majesty on high, making intercessions for us. Is that right? How many know that Hebrews 13, 8 said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, if he's the same high priest that he was yesterday, and this high priest is sitting on high, he's a high priest now, sitting on high, that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. How many knows the Bible says that? And he can be touched. Now, how are you going to touch him if he's sitting on high? The same way the woman did that touched him back there. It wasn't her finger on his garment. He didn't feel that. But it's her faith. Many was touching him this way. 
but he said, Thy faith has saved thee. Now she touched him, and he turned around and didn't know who did it. Is that right? He looked all around. He said, Who touched me? And Peter got really provoked at him and said, Oh, Lord, rebuked him. He said, No, I said, Why are you talking about anyhow? Why would you say a thing like that? Everybody's patting you on the back. He said, Yes, yeah, but this is a different kind of touch. Amen. I, I felt myself get weak. Virtue, that strength. He looked all around over the audience and he found a little woman out there and told her she'd had a blood issue and her faith had saved her. Is that right? Yeah. Now, he never said he did. He said her faith in him did. Well, now, if he's the same high priest tonight, the same as he was when he was here on earth, and he, the Bible says that he's a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, if you touch him, won't he act the same as he did then? He couldn't act different be the same high priest. How many knows that to be true? All right. Then you, by faith, you look up and say, Lord Jesus, you are my high priest. Let me touch you, Lord, with my infirmity. Have mercy on me. Let Brother Bram call now. I know he's just a man. But you're still the high priest. And now I want to touch you, and you speak to him, and call me just like you did, did that woman. That will take all doubt out of your heart, wouldn't it? Oh, isn't this wonderful? Not some ancient historical God, but a God right now. How many know that Jesus Christ said himself that he didn't do nothing until God showed him a vision first what to do? St. John 5, 19, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the word verily means absolutely, I say unto you, the Son, that's his body, the flesh, can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. Is that right? Then he never performed one miracle until he saw a vision of it being done. Is that right? If he didn't, he told something wrong. And he couldn't tell nothing wrong because he was God. See? So it had to be. Now, I want you to just get as quiet as possible and be real reverent. Watch, pray. Now, sometimes in this anointing strike, I don't say that it will. If it doesn't, then all the thing I can do is make a commitment to God, leave the platform. That's all I can do. But if he does come and does do the same thing here and prove that he's still the Messiah to the Gentile in the closing of our age as he was to the Jew and Samaritan, would you people come and receive him as Savior and Healer? Would you do it? Believe it. Now, as far as I know, in this entire audience, I don't see one person that I know on the platform. It's the far, I've got a quaint this little minister sent up in here, our little brother here. My son and my tape recording boys here is the only one I, I know. I believe I know this brother, I can't think of him. I believe you're from down in Louisiana somewhere. Yes, sir, Didn't yes. I go duck hunting sometime with you or went down there to your place or something? Yes. Had a meeting down at the um, what was the name of the place? De Quincey. De Quincey. Then it's my... Uh, excuse me, I've got shaking. Okay. I haven't seen it for a long time. Well, you haven't changed. I got old. See, I had to work, maybe. <laughs> we want you to come back. Thank you, Brother Dennis. So nice. In the prayer line, am I a stranger to you all? I don't know you. If so, raise up your hands if, I, if I'm a stranger to you. All right. All out there that I'm a stranger to and you know I don't know yet, raise up your hand. Now, here we are. Is he still Jesus or is he not? If he does, if he'll keep his word, he's still God. If that's no good, then if this Bible here, if God won't keep his promise, then he isn't God. If he does keep his promise, he is God. And now when he was sure on earth, remember what he did? He showed him his Messiah sign, and all you Bible readers know this, that the Messiah sign was the sign of a prophet. All that knows that, raise up your hand, Bible readers. Sure. Lord, your God will raise a prophet like me. But the Jews couldn't answer, so they said he does it. He's a, a fortune teller, a Beelzebub, a mental telepathy or something. And they do the same thing today. But that don't stop God. He goes right on just the same. And it's not just the same. Somebody will believe. Now, if I could heal any of you people here, I'd do it. But I can't do it. Jesus could not do it. If he's standing right here, if you come to him, 
He was standing here with this suit on he gave me. You say, Lord, I'm sick. I want you to heal me. I imagine he'd say something like this. Child of mine, don't you believe that I did that? Was not I wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquity? With my stripes you were healed. Don't you believe that? I've already done it. Now, what did he say back there? I can, if you believe. Well, it's already done now, so you just have to believe, that's all. So the only thing that he could do would be something to show you that he was the Messiah. So his body tonight is sitting on the throne of God. We believe that, don't we? Someday he will return to the earth in the millennium and sit on the throne of David. That's right. But he's sitting on the throne of God tonight in glory, ever living to make intercession. But his spirit is back here in the church, and his spirit does the same thing as I said this morning. If the first branch of the vine brought forth the Pentecostal church, every real branch out of that vine will bring forth another Pentecostal church. Amen. But we got a lot of grafted branches, and they bring forth after their kind. We got Methodist branch, grafted into it, Baptist branch, Pentecostal branch, every other kind of branch, it bears its own fruit. You can take a, a orange tree and put a grapefruit in it, it'll live off the life of that tree, but it'll bear a grapefruit. Put a lemon in there, it'll bear a lemon, not an orange, yet it's living off of orange life. See? Any citrus fruit, any church profession to be a Christian thrives off of the glory and praises of Christ, but it can't bear the fruit. It won't bear the life of Christ until Christ puts forth that branch himself. Then he'll, he'll write another book of Acts behind it. Amen. That's right. Because it is the act of the Holy oh. Spirit in the church. Okay? That's the way it is tonight. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us pray now. Everybody get real quiet. Don't move. Sit still in your church or your seat, pew, wherever it is. Just sit real still for a while. Be ready. Father, this is a great statement. But here tonight, over just a hundred or a few people here sitting here, I've asked you to come forward where there'd be tens of thousands, yes, hundreds of thousands. You've never failed us yet. My days are growing dim now, Lord. I'm, someday I'm going to have to close this Bible for its last time. If I should go tonight, you've proved the testimony to be true. Since a little lad, I told him and I saw a light. It was amber, like a pillow. You've let science all around the world take that picture and examine it. Many times have you come, and now it's in chrotochrome color. You let it be taken a few weeks ago. Germany, Switzerland, around in the world. Cameras of the nation. If I die, the mechanical camera speaks that I told him the truth. Your very presence shows that it was the truth. Your Bible claims that it's the truth. Father, may people believe it as truth. And receive thee tonight as their healer, as their savior, as their king, as their lord. Lordship to govern, to rule in their lives. Grant it, Lord. Now with myself in this church, I commit all into your hands. That you might do something tonight. To show these people that you're still the God prophet. You're still God. You, just, they, you died to take away sin, but you rose up the third day. You said, I have power to lay my life down, and I have power to take it up. No one took it from you, and no one raised it up. You laid your own self down, raised your own self up. The Bible said, God raised him up. And it's true. Father, you're alive forevermore, living in the hearts of your people with the promise, the works that I do shall they do also. I'm quoting this, Lord, because you're true to your word. And you said as it was the days of Sodom, it'll be that way just at the coming of the Son of Man. And we remember when those signs were performed in Sodom, it was just a short time until the fire fell and burnt Sodom. We are looking for it any time, Lord. We see the sign appearing. We see the world in the Sodom condition, the promises of God made manifest. Will you do it once more tonight, Lord? For the honor and glory of him who taught the word, I ask in Jesus Christ's name for God's glory. Amen. Now, no matter what goes on, be reverent. I don't mean that you can't praise God, but you approach God quietly 
insanely, wonderfully. And then when you see God do something, sure, he wants you to worship him. But come reverently. Now, when you people come in the line, coming here or out there, be on the alert. I'm watching. I have no control of it. I do not control it. It controls me. I can only speak what it tells me. I can only speak in words that I watch it. Wherever it is, there, I watch it and see what it does. Now, last night, the first person we had on the platform, I believe, was a woman. Is that right? Is this the man? Yeah. All right. The first one tonight is the man. Now, we found last night when a woman came to the Lord Jesus. She went to the well to get some water. Jesus talked to her a little while, and, and directly he found her trouble. And he said, go get your husband. She said, I don't have no husband. I said, that's right. You've had five, and the one you're living with now is not yours. She said, sir, I perceive you're a prophet. Now, the great rabbis and teachers and churchmen said he's a devil. Did you know the devil was the one that confessed him to be the Son of God? And the preachers confessed that he was the devil? That's one time the, the devil was right. Look at Paul and Silas coming down. That little fortune teller sitting up there. And that little fortune teller said, These are men of God that tell us the way of life. The preacher said they're rats about They turned the world upside down. The imposters. See? See, that devil knows more about God than they did. Right. Now, but it's not so with my brethren in these days. These are men, not saying about preachers here. They wouldn't be sitting here if they believed that. They'd be gone. They're sitting here because they believe it. They preached of it. They believed it. They stood on the street corners. They cried. They begged. Thank God we're living to see the day that he's fulfilling his promise. Your pastors, you ought to be proud of them. I am, and I know he is too. Man of God. Now this man standing before me I do not know the man he's a lot younger than I I've never seen him in my life as a Noah but he's standing here for some purpose now it might be that he may be a married man having domestic troubles in his home he may be sick he may be standing for someone else maybe financial needs I don't know what he's here for I have no idea. I've never seen him in my life. But he's standing there. Now, what if he is sick? What if he's sick? I couldn't heal him. But the only if Jesus stand here, he couldn't heal him. How many knows that? He's already done. See? But the only thing Jesus could do would be to let him know that he was still Jesus that made the promise. Is that right? Had done the work. So then if the man believed it, he'd be healed. If it was a finance trouble... He had known that God was interested in his case because it appeared before him. Not a man, but God. Now, if the Holy Spirit, this man raised his hand, that I didn't know him, hey, I don't know him and he don't know me, if the Holy Spirit will do something for him now. Now, if I walked over and say, Mister, are you sick? He'd say, Yes, sir, I am. God sent you with the gift of healing. You believe that? Yes, sir, I do. Put my hands on him. Go get well in Jesus' name. I believe he'd get well. Sure. I believe God has gifts all working all over the church everywhere. And I'll do that. I believe that the gift of healing is in the church. You don't have to be a preacher even. Just be a lay member. Anybody feels led to go pray for somebody, go do it. That's the gift of healing working in you. But now he had asked somewhat to doubt that. But what if the Holy Spirit comes and tells him something that he has been? Something that he ought not have done or something that he did do or something that he ought to have done and did not. Tell him something that's wrong with him or tell him what has been. If he knows what has been, he surely knows what will be then. Isn't that right? Now, if he will do such a thing, everyone here will have to know it comes from a power. Would you believe it to be the promise that I've read you tonight and preached to you out of the Bible that it is Jesus Christ, the Son of God? All right. Now, just as reverent as you can be, because you see, and everyone be just as reverent. Don't move because I catch your spirit, you see. And I, I want to know, just be in sincere prayer. Now, this infallible, as God is infallible, I have no way of knowing this man. You come down here and they give out prayer cards. They come here and mix up a big bunch of prayer cards and begin to give them out. That shows the boy giving them out. Couldn't say, if you give me $5, I'll put you in the line. They don't go because they mix up the cards right before your face. 
Just give you whatever you want. One might get number one, the other get number 15, the other get 95. And then, then when they come, nobody knows where we're even going to call from until I get here. Then I where the Lord leads me, I just call from there. Sometimes call a few from here, some from back here, some from over here. How many have seen that done? Well, around, 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 everywhere. So here we're standing here. And you out there without your car. Now, sir, I just want to speak to you a moment. Of course, standing there, Paul's crying out to Jesus, raising up your hand. Of course, would give me to know that you are a Christian. Or you could just be impersonating him. Just acting like he was. If, it, if he is, watch what happens. Now, they've slipped in the line a lot of times. They've packed them out and never leave them. So, if the Lord God will tell me something about you, this waiting audience, something that you're here for, what's your reason standing on the platform? You could be the judge whether it was right or not, would you? you know what was right. And if it is right, you'll be willing to say it's right. If it's wrong, say it's wrong. You come for me to pray for you, for a condition of your body. And that condition is the growth on your side. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You believe it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, he seems to have a good contact of God just now. That's, that's a critic or something that might perhaps be standing by. Might know that they just didn't guess it. Oh, hallelujah. Now, right now, I do not know what I told you. The only way I know is this recorder sitting here. Then the tape comes back. Next day, they'll play it to me. It's like a dream. Now, that wasn't me. I don't know nothing about the man. See, no more than this microphone knows how to speak. It has to be something alive speaking in it. I don't know the man, so it has to be God speaking in. Now, just take my time. If you just keep one here a while, just so that you'll know. That ought to be sufficient for all. Now, just a moment, sir. I just want to... Get in contact with your spirit. That's the same thing our Lord did when he talked to a woman at the well and said, bring me a drink. See, he was only trying to come. The Father sent him up there. He had me go by Samaria. But when he got there, the woman come out, so he had to talk to her to contact her spirit. That's the same thing I'm doing right now. Yes, I see it. It's a girl in your right side. you got one on your arm, too. That's right. That's right. One more. Three people know about it. Only three people in the world knew about it. Oh, but there's one above knows about it. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's talk to him a minute. You've been praying for someone else, too. A child. Tonsil trouble sitting right out there. Right. It's going to be well. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. You believe? You believe God knows who you are? Yes, hallelujah. Mr. Marshall? Jack? That's right. Go home. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Now, if I didn't say one word to you and just prayed for you, you believe there's anointing here to platform? You know? Would you believe that? What if I told you were healed before you come up there? Would you believe it? I believe it. Well, what do you think about your grandson? You think he'd get well? Oh, yes. All right. Go ahead and believe it. Oh, that hang you. Do you believe? Have faith. You're just a child, you mean. young woman. I don't know you. But here's the same picture, like in St. John, the fourth chapter. A woman and a man. Lovely young woman stands here. Looks as healthy as she can be. 
I don't know nothing about her. Never seen her in my life. We're strangers to one another, aren't we, lady? Yes, sir, we are. If God is the Word of God, which is Christ made flesh, and if He can be made real in our flesh, which He sanctified with His own blood, sending in His Holy Spirit to tabernacle, God was in Christ. God come down to build, He made a tent like man. He, he changed His caste and became man, God did that he might sanctify a church that he could live in and for 2,000 years work his miracles and prove that he was the same God living in his people. God tabernacling man. If God will reveal to me by his Spirit what's your trouble, will you believe me to be his prophet or his servant? You believe that? Would you accept it to be from God? Then you'll embrace that baby that you want, that you're praying for. Go believe it. I give you that child in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit. Don't doubt. You wanted that for some time. Go believe it. If thou canst believe. You believe? All right, lady. I do not know you. Just a moment, you're starting in the building now. There it moved out, left the platform, went into the building. Somebody touched him as certain as I'm standing here. There's a younger woman standing here. I can't locate her. I see her. Got neck trouble, arthritis of the spine. Do you believe with all your heart? Jesus Christ make you well. Accept it? Believe it? The little lady sitting here with glasses on, dark hair. Stand up. I give you your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. What did she touch? That's the lady. I don't know you do it, lady. I do not know you do it. No. If I don't know you, raise up your hand. Shake your hand. If that was your trouble, what he told you, shake your hand. Now you're healed. What did she touch? She's 30 feet from me. She touched the high priest. And he acted just like he did at the beginning. Now that's the same Jesus the same yesterday today. Have faith. Don't doubt. Some of the rest of you, I challenge your faith to believe not me. Believe the Word of God. Believe I told you the truth. I challenge your faith to, to believe that. Right behind her, you did, didn't you, lady? Sitting right behind her there, sitting there with high blood pressure. Stand up on your feet. If that's true, raise up your hand. If I don't know you, raise up your other hand. I give you your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. You touched him. He sure knows about you. Go home and be well. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. You believe with all your heart? Something strange about it. I don't know you. God does know you. You believe God will heal you and make you well? You're not from here. You're from a place called Honey. Your name's Miss Day. That's right. You're praying for a brother, oh, yes. a brother's in Galveston yes, in a hospital. He's yes, an uh, addict. Yes, sir. Woo! Don't believe. Don't doubt. Jesus Christ makes you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Have faith in God. You believe? What if I didn't say nothing? You just laid hands on you. Would you believe, lady? Yes. Come here. 
Receive your healing. In the name of Jesus Christ, go believe. What if I told you that diabetes would be gone? Would you believe it? Don't believe it. Don't doubt it. When you were sitting right down here a while ago, eh, I seen you suffering with heart trouble. You also had something wrong with your back. Now go believing and you'll get well if you do with all your heart. Come, young lady. You believe me to be his prophet? You're a young lady, but you have a female trouble. A dripping. Uh, the abscess over you. Don't doubt. Believe. Go, it'll never happen no more. If you believe, well. believe with all your heart. You believe with all your heart? See, if you just believe now, it's just perfect with the Holy Spirit working. What if I just laid hands on you? Would you think you'd get well? Come. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Amen. Come believe. If I didn't say one word to you, would you believe if I laid hands on you, you'd get well? Well, come in that diabetes. Oh, go ahead. Diabetes will be all right. You get well. Don't believe all you believe with all your heart, everybody? Believe now. I just look. Now, what did you say? You know there's some sort of anointing here somewhere Amen. that knows you. You believe that? A little lady sitting there free and shaking her head with heart trouble. Put stop. Stop fearing. Believe with all your heart. You're going to get well anyhow. God's going to make you well. That lady sitting out there praying for her unsaved son. Believe with all your heart. God will take care of it for you. I don't know you do, a lady. Don't know you at all, but that's what she's praying about. How would I know what she's praying about? The God who hears prayer can answer prayer. Amen. You believe with all your heart? Yes. Have faith. Now, be reverent. Come, let lay hands on you now while the Lord is Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may she be healed. Amen. I believe it. You know... Really, it's your nervousness that did it, made your stomach like that. Are you just raised tonight and say, I'm finished with it, I believe God, and then go eat your stuff. You'll Amen. Come on. In the name of the Lord. Someone might say, you're, if you're old, your heart's weak anyhow. But it is, and you've got a nervous heart, you've had it a long time. Go believe with all your heart, you'll get well, and you'll go home. Praise well. God. You love the Lord? Amen. Something has happened, but I can't find it. Just, everything's becoming a blur to me now, see. How many know what the visions do you that way? Daniel saw one is trouble that he's had for many days. How many know that? Sure. One woman touched the hem of the garment of the master, and he said, Virtue's gone from me. All right, sister, come believing now. You'll never be crippled with me. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Believe with all your heart. Do you believe with all your heart, everybody? What could happen right now? Anything could take place. Surely you're aware that something's here. The God that you serve is right with you now. I see a lady sitting here with her head up. She's praying. That light's hanging right over her. I'm just afraid she won't catch it. She's got bowel trouble and back trouble. Oh, God. Hope she... Do. Miss Dickman, raise up and accept your healing. <laughs> All right, God bless you. The lady here with the red sweater on this one. Right over here on the end of the road, there's a man and a woman sitting there. Woman's had a lot of trouble.
She's had about a dozen operations. Got a liver trouble. Her husband has artery trouble. Mr. and Mrs. Maine, believe with all your heart and go home and be healed. Jesus Christ make you well. I challenge you to look this way and believe it. I ask you to believe it. Hallelujah. How many believe with all your heart? Oh, sinner friend, would you like to receive this Jesus? You that raised your hand, you were sinners. Come here just a minute. Let me lay hands on you, will you? Come right down here now, sinner friend. Come here, I'll invite you to Christ. Come, let lay hands on you. If God knows your heart, He wants you to be forgiven of your sins. Come right now around the altar here, will you? Every sinner in the building that wants to receive Jesus as their Savior, come right down now. Everyone, right while the Holy Spirit is anointing, move right down, that's right. Come every soul of sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord. Won't you come? Come right around. That's just fine. Come on, every sinner that doesn't know God, you want to be remembered now in prayer and want God to save your soul. Why don't you share presence? The Holy Spirit stopped me just saying it's a call. I've got children waiting out there. The same God that can be infallibly talking, can he say the same thing? Now is the hour. Now is the time. Move out. Everyone that wants to find Christ as Savior, come around the altar here just a moment. Will you do it? Come every soul a sin oppressed there. before my Father and the Holy Angel. That's what he promised. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I ask him now as we bow our heads for prayer. How many in here now that is sick and afflicted yet? Raise your hands. Now you lay your hands over on one another. Put your 